Okay, this is for possibly some of you online students that may not be here, or I might just uh, forward it to some of the advanced students. I don't, generally don't do uh, blowtorch. This, this is a blowtorch. Um, oxygen, acetylene, um, a lesson, but some of you advanced students might want to know how I shape some of my flowers and stuff. I, first of all, I want to say it's taken me years and years and years. I, I've done sculptures outside, I've done 17 foot tall sculptures um, of flowers, and that's what I'm going to do today. Um, but I just want to say it takes years and years, and a lot of it, so much of it, is just getting comfortable with the torch. If you're interested in doing the torch, I will work one-on-one -on -one with you, but I suggest taking a class at Tech or um, Penland or someplace like that. So anyway, this is an oxygen acetylene torch. Um, it has two handles, one's for oxygen and the other's for acetylene or gas. Um, some people use propane instead. Um, over here is the tanks. We've got a long cord. Here's the oxygen acetylene tanks. Um, there's two regulators. One is to tell you how much oxygen or acetylene you have, and the other one is to pressure per inch, or PSI. Generally, when you're working um, with oxygen and acetylene, you want the oxygen at 20 PSI, and you want the, the acetylene at 5 PSI, or 5 to 8. Um, you control the PSI. First of all, you turn on the oxygen all the way. Um, the next thing you do is turn the acetylene like a quarter of a turn. All right, so I've got some dark shades on and my gloves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the torch on. This is also, real quick, this is also a very convenient thing to have, which was here in the um, art department. It's a forge torch and cuts a lot of my stuff I don't have time to hold the torch. The, the, the torch gets in the way. So I'm going to light the torch. First, the first thing you light is the gas, which is a red cord. We'll turn the gas on and lighting it with this flint thing. Oh, that was a big light. All right, so normally when I would light it, it would be like right about here and see that black gas? And black smoke, you need to blow that, turn it up so that you don't have the black smoke. All right, and then you turn on the oxygen, which is the knob up here. This one will probably be on all the time. Next step, long feather. Where you have tiny little feathers. Make sure that you take this over to the sink to quench um, for a little while because. The tendency is to pick it up and it will burn your gloves and burn for a long time. We have tons of these round this. See how this one's a lot grayer than this one? This one has rust on it. This one's okay to use for the pitch. And I found out yesterday um, from the that this is not a good metal to use. I think it's galvanized. See, I don't know. All right, I'm just going to go through all the steps. Compressor over here. Um, in order for the plasma cutter to work, you have to turn it on, but I'm not going to because it's very loud right now. Um, in the back, you'll see a air hose, and that connects to the plasma cutter, and then put the air compressor brings the air through there. I don't know how to explain how these things work. In the back is an on-off switch, and I'm turning it on. It's already plugged in. Here's the controls, and you have the green light says the power is on. Um, if I tried to do, cut something now, the pressure light would come on because I don't have the air compressor on. It has to have that pressure. Uh, then there's a cup light, and that means you screwed up the consumables, the, the tip. And then there's a temperature light, which I had not seen until recently when I was doing thick metals, it won't let you, it won't continue with it. Um, if the temperature light goes on, the, the machine will kind of cut off. Um, not anyway, here's the pattern and I'm doing it. If y'all are in the class, 
we will do this together. Okay. Okay, I'm going to shape each leaf. I'm talking during this video, but I'm going to shape each leaf one at a time with my needle nose pliers. And this is going to take a while, but I'm going to take you through the steps in a very quick way. I'm going to wear there and I'm going to weld it on. Alright, so now I can keep going and going and going but this is pretty much my lotus and, um, with a stem and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this is a lily pad. It's curled up to look like a leaf. So now um, someone once told me sculpture loves shadow and so I intentionally and many blacksmiths will roll over in their grave um, about what I do, but I paint, I put gold leaf on my sculpture, and of course if it's outdoors it's always painted. So, I'm, but I, I like to, there's a little extra texture that happens when you put um, grout in there. So these are going to be indoor pieces, so it doesn't matter. I'm mixing grout and black paint because that's sort of my colors, my aesthetic. And this is not the blacksmith way. This is just the way I've figured it out to do it my, my way. 
I did it my way. So this is just plain acrylic paint and grout. I mean, if, if I want it to last forever, which I don't see forever, but if I wanted it to last forever, I'd put a clear coat on it. The fact is that this may go into another piece of art. See the dummies, ventriloquism dummies behind me? It might go into this big production number of the ventriloquism dummies. So uh, I might even have to go leave it. And what's not shown on the video is I took a Dremel tool and uh, hit a few of the highlights and it just gives it a bright, um, more three-dimensional look.